How's it going everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is part 6 of What If Deku Was the Son of Nezu. And now, before we begin, I would just like to ask you all to please consider subscribing, as it really does help this channel out, and you can even be notified when the other parts of this series do end up coming out. And now, let's begin. Shigaraki, you know that Izuku kid you were talking about? The one you saw at the USJ that was able to defeat the Nomu? Oh, yes, all for one. What is it about with him? You said he had some sort of cork that allowed him to turn into different types of animals, yes? Yeah, he turned into a gorilla, a bird, I think, and then a dragon? The dragon one was the one that managed to defeat the Nomu. Hmm. All for one starts to think. If I were to get that boy's cork, I could become unstoppable. Shigaraki. Go get me Dobby, please, real quick, All for One would say, as Shigaraki would then nod his head towards All for One. As Shigaraki would then rush over towards the just basic hideout, as he would and go and find Dobby. Once he would get him, he would tell Dobby that All For One wants to speak to him before guiding Dobby to All For One's room. Dobby, you are one of the smartest ones in this league, so I'm tasking you with this mission. I want you to make a plan, as there's going to be a summer training camp up in the mountains in just about a week. Now, I want you to make a plan to get Isuku Midoriya's cork, or just get him here and I'll take the cork, of course. So, you must come up with a plan. I presume he's kind-hearted. So, say if you were to capture two of his friends, he might offer up himself. You just gotta make sure the scenario and situation plays right into your hand. You got it? All for One would say. Dobby would look on towards All for One before nodding his head. Alright, I got you. Dobby would say before going off to make his plan. A week now passes as we see Izuku leaning his head up against a bus window as it just bounces up and down, as finally the bus comes to a screeching halt on the side of the mountain, as there on the side of the mountain was the wild wild pussycats, as they would look at Izuku and the rest of his class before telling him that they now have to make their way to the training camp while defeating different types of obstacles. Izuku would look at them before seeing it, the ground was about to start crumbling as you would feel it within his feet. As the ground crumbles down beneath them, Izuku waits to see the bus drive off as Izuku would then transform into a dragon. However, when he would try to communicate, all that came out was roars, as Izuku would only sigh before transforming back into a human. Alright, once I transform into a dragon, everyone get onto my back, Izuku would say. Everyone would nod their heads as Izuku would transform into his biggest dragon he could remember, as everyone would get onto Izuku's back. Izuku would then lift up into the air, as he would and then end up flying away. One of the students would end up looking down for casually saying, Hey, Izuku, it looks like you forgot Moneta. Oh, uh, oh well, I guess. Take too much energy for me to go back down there. So we cut to see Moneta rushing over trying to get the attention of Izuku. Izuku, wait! Come back for me! Izuku's, of course, words didn't really make sense to them, but they just assumed he said, well, who cares? As Izuku would be flying, he would end up making his way over to where the bus was, taking a quick detour. As he would then land on the bus, grabbing it in his claws, before flying off towards the summer training camp, landing down as the heroes would then just be shocked. No student had ever managed to do the summer training camp test so quickly, yet Izuku had done it while also getting there, them there within 10 minutes while also saving his classmates from having to do all the work too. He's quite the smart one, isn't he, Isawa? Yes, he's a prodigy, pretty much. He has a hyper-intelligence quirk, and he can also turn into animals, as you can see with the dragon thing. And plus, he is Nezu's son, and I trained him since he was like 10 or so. Oh, that explains why he's so resourceful, I guess. 
they would say, as I saw what would only nod his head in agreement, as they would then start to train the students since they had gotten there before they had thought, so they would just begin with another pre-warm-up to when the actual hell does begin. So, as all of the students would be stretching, they would then begin with a huge run down the mountain and then a sprint up the mountain. As all of the students would be begging not to do this, they were forced to, and they could use their corks, however. So Izuku would transform into a bird, flying all the way up with complete ease. As the hero who was doing this, watching Izuku do this, was just like, why can't you guys be like him? He was able to pass us with no problem. This route should take us just over an hour, and he made it up there within ten minutes. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. He's in your class. Why can't you be like him? He would say. However, this teacher was only doing that to try and motivate the students, which clearly wasn't really going as planned. A week of this training hell with all of them would end up passing with Izuku mostly just being there to help spar with the students. As Izuku had proved how strong and intelligent he was, so they really just thought if, yeah, if he was going to be training here, it really wouldn't do anything to him. So we might as well just have him train other students. So Izuku would end up just taking the students down while some of them would be training their corks. Izuku would be training them in fighting skills that he had learned from Aizawa, mastering them after the many years he'd been learning under Aizawa. So, with that, the week would pass, as they would then be given the day to go outside, play, sit in the hot springs, do all of that sort of thing. And Class 1B, being there as well, would come up with the great idea of doing a hide-and-seek scare type thing, and they'll be the seekers, while Class 1A will be the hiders. As they would all rush out, Izuku would choose to stay behind, deeming as it really wasn't worth his time to play a hide-and-seek and seek game. Yes, it would be enjoyable, but he could do better things, like training, of course, to hopefully try to get stronger. As Izuku would go inside to start training while also helping some of the students learn, since he was also the teacher who would be helping the uh, just summer the summer school kids that were inside instead of training, Izuku would end up helping them by teaching them just some other types of things. After a while, Izuku would go outside to take a break, however, it was already nighttime, and Izuku would get a strong scent of a burning wood. Izuku would end up just being confused. Before looking up, he would see a massive cloud of smoke. He would say, Aizawa, do you happen to be burning anything just about a mile or so that way? Aizawa would look at Izuku funny before shaking his head. Izuku would transform into a tiny bird flying up into the air before looking down onto the trees. He would see a massive blue fire was spreading rapidly through the forest. It was like a massive tsunami of fire, taking, tr taking trees one by one as it continues to move closer and closer towards Izuku. Izuku would look over towards the teachers before yelling that they need to get all of the students back towards the main training camp as there was a fire and it doesn't look like real, just naturally caused one. This looks like a villain fire, Izuku would say. As Izuku would end up remembering something. Kota, one of the heroes, one of the hero's nephews, he was here too. But where was he? Suku would look over towards one of them before asking where Kota was, as she would then say, he has a hiding spot over on the cliff edge. Please try to save him. She would say desperately on towards Zuku, as Zuku would nod his head, flying off, rushing off towards wherever, wherever Kota, this kid, happened to be. As Izuku would flying off, he would search for this cliff edge before finding it. However, he was too far away to end up making it there, as this massive villain with tons of just muscles surrounding him, that looked like kind of like raw flesh, was approaching him fast. As Izuku would end up transforming into a cheetah, rushing as fast as he could, 
he would end up jumping right at Muscular, transforming right into a dragon, slamming his body right into Muscular at such a high velocity and speed that it causes Muscular's entire direction to shift right off of the mountain, sending him exploding the other way before he would end up landing right into a pile of trees. As Zuko would end up putting out his hand towards Kota after transforming into a regular human, he would toss Kota into the air before transforming into a pegasus, flying off towards wherever the heroes were. As he would end up landing, he would see that Magni and Spinner had started to surround them. As Asuka would see this jump in the way after dropping Kota off, punching Magni right across the face, a Spinner would go to try to get an attack in on Azuku's back. However, he would flip over Spinner, grabbing Spinner's neck, putting him to a headlock, or he would end up knocking him out with a qu quick just slash to the neck. As both of them would lay there, Azuka would tie them up, looking over towards Aisawa. Did you happen to find any students? he would ask. Aizawa would shake his head as Azuku would then rush into the forest, where he would end up searching far and wide before he would end up spotting Suyu Asui and Unchako Uraraka. However, all of a sudden, he would start to hear giggles from around the corner, as Azuku would create his hand a wing, slashing with such a high speed that the wind pressure sliced right through a tree, where there stood a blonde-haired girl staring at them, holding a knife, as she would then rush on towards them, continually laughing. As Isuku would see this, the girl would slash on towards him, however, Isuku would grab the blade, causing his hand to start bleeding. However, he would twist the blade back till it was pointing right at her neck. As she would be seeing this, she would start to struggle as Isuku continued to push on forward. However, before the knife could even cut her, Isuku would have Suyuasui come up behind her and then end up just using her tongue to grab her around the neck, slamming her right into a tree. As Suzuki would end up saying this, he would end up saying, All right, guys, I'm going to go look for more students. The training camp's that back that way, he would say, pointing there before rushing off. As both of them would nod their heads, tying up Toga or carrying her over towards the summer training camp, just the main building, that is. As Suzuki would be rushing around, all of a sudden he would come to a stop, as there he stood face to face with Dabi, along with Bakugo and Todoroki. As Suzuki would be staring face to face with Dabi, all of a sudden teeth looking things that were very jagged would come out of nowhere, spewing right down at Suzuki, Bakugo, and Todoroki, trying to hit them. However, Suzuki would jump out of the way, and so would Bakugo and Todoroki. However, they happened to jump just a little too high, as the air came Mr. Compress, compressing both Bakugo and Todoroki into the palm of his hand into tiny little marbles. Suzuki would see this as Mr. Compress would then toss both of the marbles down to Dobby. As he would end up catching them, Dobby would look down right at them. <laughs> All right. Let's go, then, he would say, snapping his fingers, about to go right into a portal. However, Zuku would yell, wait, for Dobby. As Dobby would smile, knowing as Zuku would run right into his trap. If you release both of them, I'll go with you, Zuku would say. Oh, really? Fine, then, Dobby would say, as he would then toss the marbles back over towards Izuku. Izuku would smile, you know, thinking he had won. However, all of the sun, out of nowhere, Kaminari came in, about to electrocute Dobby. As Izuku was going to punch Dobby, he would grab Kaminari's neck within an instant. Uh, 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 not so fast. If you happen to take another step that towards me and not into that portal... Your friend here is going to be toast, Dobby would say. Suku would sigh, face palming, knowing that Kaminari just had to ruin, had to ruin his chances of being able to feed and capture this villain. So Suku would sigh before walking into the portal. Hello, Izuku Midoriya. And that is where part six of What If Deku Was the Son of Nezu comes to an end. I hope you all did enjoy it, and if you did, please consider subscribing as it really does help this channel out, and you can even be notified when the other parts of the series do end up coming out. And yeah, I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye!